Marstown Sick Schools Health Clinic. Well, we really are excited today. We have uh, Dr. Lindsay Blackman with us today and her entourage here. Uh, she can introduce here in just a second. But uh, several years ago, you know, we talked about, it was 2008, we talked about trying to find a way to have a health clinic on campus and we get roadblock after roadblock. After about 18 months, we, we finally just had to stop pushing on it. We just couldn't get anything done with it. Uh, very pleased, uh, as I shared with you earlier, uh, that Dr. Blackman uh, approached us uh, recently and, and said, I think, I think we can do this. And uh, she has removed uh, many of those roadblocks. Uh, in fact, I guess all of those as of today. So we are thrilled to have her here. And uh, uh, Dr. Blackman, I'm gonna turn this over to you and uh, talk to us about, about the potential Barstown City School Health Clinic. Okay, all right, well, as you said, my name is Lindsay Blackman. I'm actually a 2002 graduate of Bardstown High School. Um, most recently, I've worked at Physicians to Children for the past three years as a pediatrician there. So today, we we're just gonna talk a little bit about um, the Bardstown City School Health Clinic, the proposal to do so. So just to give you some background about my organization, um, we have a 37 year history in Bardstown. We have seven pediatricians, three nurse practitioners, and then most recently, we've established a division called Bardstown Behavioral Health, where we have one nurse practitioner who provides our mental, mental health services only. And then we actually have four therapists who do behavioral health therapy um, in our office, but also in this school system. Um, so our clinic, what would it do? Um, we're proposing to actually do an on-site health clinic where we would actually have a provider in the school system. It would be staffed by one of our nurse practitioners and then directly supervised by our pediatricians. Um, the nurse practitioner would not replace the school nurse by any means. She would actually work as um, a supplement to the current services provided by the school nurse. Who could be seen? Well, really most students that are in the school system could be seen, including, we're also gonna expand the service to include um, children of the employees, um, at, at the school system, and then also any sibling um, who happens to be a sibling of a student in the school system who's also one of our patients. So say for example, if um, a parent has two sick kids, one that's a student in, at the primary school, for example, and another one that might be too young to be in the school system or perhaps goes to a different school in the area, both of those could, kids could be seen in the school clinic just to provide a convenient service for the parent. Um, it would be an optional service, so we're going to try to obtain consent at the beginning of the school year along with the registration packets. Parents can still like to take to continue to take their kids to their current primary care physician um, or even use those just kind of as needed, more like an urgent care clinic um, during the school day. So what services will we provide? Well, we hope to be kind of a full-fledged clinic, so physical services, um, illness visits and minor injuries. Well, we, we will do vaccinations on site and um, do on site diagnosis and treatment. If a child does need a prescription, we'll go ahead and send that electronically to their pharmacy of choice that the parent has designated at the beginning of the school year. And we are going to make every effort to go ahead and contact the parent before the child is actually seen, um, just so the parent gets a heads up that their kid is going to be seen by our provider. Um, so we can go over just kind of a brief example of it, how it works now. You know, um, if a child complains of a sore throat, the teacher might go ahead and send them to the school nurse. The school nurse does her assessment. If she feels that the child is sick enough that they need to be evaluated further, she calls the parent. The parent probably takes off of work, comes to pick up the student, um, and then the child calls our office or their doctor's office, makes an appointment for later in the day or perhaps the next day, um, and is seen that way. And so um, in our proposal, we hope to make it a lot more convenient, kind of um, put everything in a quicker type of service. So for our proposed example would be that the child is seen at the school nurse's office, she feels they need further evaluation, and the child would walk to the next um, cubicle, perhaps to see the provider there. Uh, the provider would then um, diagnose the child, see if they needed to be, have any further treatment, Save the kid with strep throat, if they needed a prescription, she would send that over to the pharmacy and notify the parent. Let's say if the child was determined to be well enough to go back to class, she would send the child back to class. So hopefully, we hope to miss um, less class time and then also offer really good service for parents too. So how does it work? Um, the services would be pro provided at no cost to the school. Space would be provided in the current nurse's office. 
patients will continue to be billed under the normal health insurance just like if they were to go to their doctor's office normally and finally we do use electronic health records and um, we will use a secure Wi-Fi system on site using our current EMR so benefits you know we could probably talk all afternoon if you wanted to about a lot of these benefits and um, we've been talking all year about the benefits but you know the obvious is just providing on-site services and medical records um, including immunizations you know a lot of times documents go missing whether it's a child's shot record or their physical forms and so we hope to have these right there in the computer where we can go ahead and give these to the school nurses and fill in their holes um, we hope to cut down on class time that's missed for doctor's appointments we hope to help parents with missing work um, we also hope to provide quick availability for physicals Usually we have um, a few rushes during the year, whether it's at the beginning of the school year or um, before a sports season starts. Um, a lot of kids, they might wait to the last minute to need their physical where they need it done that day so they can go to practice that afternoon. And so we hope to be able to accommodate those patients as well. Um, and then of course we hope to send more kids back to class versus keeping them home. So that's kind of our brief overview. You guys have any questions or? Uh, yes. It, okay. Would you be available and say it's at school to actually call and make an appointment if my son was sick on Sunday and we need to come in, he's got a stomach ache or something, instead of us calling a, a regular. Sure. Uh, yeah. Can we say, well, he, can we see you Monday at nine o'clock at school? Absolutely. It's going to be so. just um, a, a satellite office for us. So our hours are at the school clinic are going to be eight to three thirty, kind of keeping with the school nurse. And if you want to go ahead and schedule an illness appointment, your child might wake up with a stomach ache. You don't know if they're okay to go back to school or go on to school or not. We hope to get that child in first thing, see them at the first appointment, and then if they're okay, be able to go to the school day or not. Or if not, we we'll come pick them up or whatever. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, the That's parent great. the parent isn't going to be required to be there. So in that case, probably the parent would bring the child to the appointment. Mm -hmm. um, but if the child maybe has a, a complaint during the school day, they they wouldn't have to be there with the child. Well, great. I think this is great, but I have a question. It has nothing. It has a little bit to do with this. Why don't doctors like to give penicillin shots to kids? <laughs> <laughs> <in the middle? laughs> I think it's just the shots. Um, honestly, we don't keep the, the penicillin in stock at the office. They would have to go to a pharmacy and get it, bring it back, and get the shot. Um, but then also, we try to give as few shots as possible, too, which I think the kids appreciate. My granddaughter has had some experiences. And back when in, with, with our kids, we take the doctor, they give them a shot of penicillin. Right. Day and a half, two days later, they're up and going. Sure. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Blackman, I have a question for you. Uh, let's say that uh, I don't uh, use physicians to children uh, and I want to go to another doctor. Is that a possibility? Yeah, you can still, I mean, it would just work like the old system. You would parent, you know, the school nurse would call the parent, the parent would come pick them up um, and continue to use their own doctor. If they wanted to see us just for that one time sick visit, they, the parent could give us consent to see them that one time. Um, but otherwise, they would keep using their normal primary care doctor. And you, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I was just going to ask about, you have pre-registration for this? for the school, <laughs> We will. School year? We hope to be in the school open houses when we catch the majority of students that come through the door with their parents. So, and I know Felicia and I have gotten together about doing a new um, school health form that they would all fill out, every student in the district would fill out anyways. And we're going to hope to put our consent on that form, yes or no, you want to be involved That'd be in great. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I was going to ask about the strip. Mm -hmm. uh, so the school nurse thinks the child may have strep throat. Mm -hmm. This is a current system. So they send them to the pediatrician. And of course, the parent has to pick them up. Right. And they don't have to, they can't go back to school unless, you know, they have a note saying they don't have strep. Correct. So all of this is going to be done at the school? Or That's what we would like to, yeah. Just so, so you can do the test. At the exactly. Well. We're going to do flu tests, strep tests, mono tests, um, urines. We can't do everything because we won't have a full-fledged lab, but we can do the basic quick tests like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that would save because some parents are taking off from work. Right. And they're taking the water. Sometimes it endangers their job. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And also, say more about the mental health services. Sure, yeah, it's, um, it's a really neat service. We just expanded last year. 
Um, like I said, we do have one nurse practitioner. She only sees um, mental health cases only. Um, so she might treat ADD, depression, um, anxiety, and then some more serious mental health disorders as well. And then our therapists are, are really great. We've just grown to four and we're looking to expand even further. Um, I think we could take as many as would come to us, but we're looking for good quality therapists to stay with us. Um, they provide therapy services in our office, but then also in the school. And that was kind of our first stepping stone to getting into the school. We've had some great feedback from the teachers, from the parents, um, and I think from the administration as well. The, yeah, well, that's a great segue into this. The, uh, the evaluation for the need of, of mental health or mental treatment, mental health treatment, uh, will be done by one of the nurse practitioners. How, how do you, would you handle something like that in, in the school? So the mental health um, division, so the therapist will continue doing what they're doing. Um, as far as being seen by a provider from a mental health standpoint, you know, currently she's just over in our office. You know, in, in my vision, um, I, I did my training at UK and we had um, one of the doctors there. He would go into school every so often, maybe mm -hmm. once a month, to see all of his ADD patients, for example, in the morning. Um, and so I would love to be able to one day send Leslie over to the school system and for her to see her kids in 15 minute incre increments when the parent came to the school. Now that isn't, you know, in the plans or finalized, but I think if this, this part is successful, hopefully we'll be able to expand it and include more services. Great, right. right. thanks. Uh, one a couple questions I wrote down. Is there, are you going to have any kind of a website interactivity? You talked about maybe making an appointment or something, and will that be tied in with the Bardstown website, or is there going to be any kind of a separate section for that, or is there any plans for that? Yeah, so, well, for the, as far as to make an appointment, you know, we still would require, we don't do um, online appointment requests, even in our main office or anything. Um, we are going to put our registration packets and stuff on our website, and then hopefully Lance will help me um, and put the registration along with the school health forms and stuff on your all's website, too, so they could access them sure. from either part. Uh, and then uh, the costs associated with this are you for you then as well? Yeah, I, I think it, it appears there will be no additional charge or, or money that we have to pay to physicians to children. Uh, there will be a small uh, amount, uh, somewhere between $1,500 and $3,000 for a renovation in this area. We're, we're going to I try to do that and that that's a that's a pretty high number uh but just to give you some comfort in what the maximum amount would be would be around three thousand bucks to to do the upgrade in the in, in the renovation but other than that there uh there should not be a, any any cost associated whatsoever well uh, insurance would be billed as they normally are right. I, I just think this is fantastic and i'd like to applaud uh, mr hulse calls and everyone else that's involves efforts in bringing this up online and are there any other questions or comments from the board. Would this include preschool? Yes, yeah, I forgot to mention that. So um, students on the main campus will be seen as well as the primary school, early childhood, and then even um, kids that go to the staff child care are eligible to be seen as well. Fantastic. May I have a motion for approval of our <coughs> city schools health plan? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Those opposed? motion carries thank you it's great thank wonderful you. thank you uh so, dr blackman before you get away i just really want to say thank you to you and uh physicians and children we, we're so grateful for uh, all that you've done to make this happen and uh, i don't know that people really understand how big this really is this is really a, a huge event that's taking place here today we start this next school year uh, with a health clinic uh, here for our students and uh, we've had this conversation about it has everything to do with the type of of uh, medical system uh, that a person has passport uh, if you go to the to the west of kentucky and to lexington over to the east this is not that unusual but inside of this space this is very unusual and uh, we're we're very proud to be a part of this we're proud to be your partner uh, thank you lori uh, thank you felicia i know we've all worked very hard to to get to this point today to make this presentation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. You know Kara Blackman. <laughs> <laughs>